2008 has been an amazing year. In January, November 586 Quebec, the airplane I was building in the first video made its maiden flight after a hard-fought battle with the FAA. The meetings you set up for me with your engineers in August of 07 prepared me well for my series of January 08 meetings with the FAA. Thank you. They were my first ever one-on-one -on -one meetings with government officials. I had to defend my 300 plus modifications to the airframe kit, engine mount, and engine. The Boston Visdo helped prepare me for the inspection. MIT notarized the paperwork. And, upon my return to Chicago, five members of the FAA Manufacturing Inspection Satellite Office descended upon the 850 pounds of aluminum, steel, and leather, as well as the paperwork. It passed! Before 86 Quebec had taxied to the ramp and shut down after its maiden flight, an in-cockpit email was received from the FAA congratulating me on the successful first flight. It was not until after the first flight that I learned how close I came to owning an 850-pound paperweight, as some in the FAA were calling it. If it were not for an FAA clerk mixing the original paperwork with the duplicate originals, I might not have received the inspection in time to meet the January 31st deadline for ELSA certification. When the FAA called and asked what the differences between the original and duplicates were, I told them to feel the notary page for an embossed seal. When a regional administrator felt the page and held it up to the light, he saw what he described as MIT's seal of approval, albeit the mere notary seal of MIT's Aeroaster department. He figured if I could get MIT to place their seal on it, I deserved a shot at passing the MISO inspection. Being allowed to remove the built by an amateur warning label was amazing. That placard is now resting on a Nobel laureate's credenza. MIT found great humor in the account. My first visit to MIT and I walk away with sealed airworthiness documents. They have been so helpful ever since. In February, Nobel laureate Dr. Lira Max Letterman, a scientific advisor to LBJ during the moonshot, punched out the data plate for our 2018 craft, the Beyond Suborbital One, November 5887 Quebec. As a newly minted manufacturer of aircraft, I was allowed to issue a manufacturer's certificate of origin and register the craft as soon as the data plate was complete. The act of issuing the certificate was not legally effective until placed in the U.S. mail. I asked the former superintendent of schools in Illinois to drive the paperwork 50 miles to my former chief of schools in Chicago for him to mail it. Although it was only a hunchback in February, he is now the nominee for Secretary of Education. So, we can always say that a Nobel laureate punched out the first part of our spacecraft and that the Secretary of Education registered it for us. How cool is that? 87 Quebec was registered with the FAA as a one-way mission propelled by external pulse plasma devices. My contracts within the FAA figured it would be a lot easier to switch, if need be, from external pulse plasma devices to conventional and from one way to round trip rather than trying to do it the other way around. In March, I designed aileron attached gussets for my airplane and spec'd A5 stainless steel rivets in lieu of the kit's A4 aluminum rivets for the inboard aileron attach points. This was after reviewing the maiden flight video I had sent you, as well as examining NTSB photos of recent crashes of similar aircraft where the ailerons had unzipped. Also in March, the hammer Dr. Letterman used to punch out our 87 Quebec's data plate was hung on the wall outside of MIT's Dean of Undergraduate Education's office. April was a great month. I was invited to Fermilab's Space Colloquium and future Nobel Laureate Dr. GPA introduced me at the social hour as the designer of the next generation spacecraft. The FAA was in attendance and, not realizing that he was just being kind, changed our spacecraft's registration from pending to valid that same evening. Okay, so now we have a spacecraft with the data plate punched out by the only moonshot advisor to win the Nobel Prize registered by the Secretary of Education, and the registration status is valid. We've only spent $7.95 to do this. The humorous thing about it is that in Illinois, you can elect to pay use tax when you start the project or wait until you are done. Rather than paying taxes in 2018 on a $500 million craft, I elected to pay the use tax now. $1 in use tax later and $10 in registration fees, I received the official Illinois registration sticker to place on our crafts. So, we have a spacecraft with the data plate punched out by a Nobel laureate, validly registered with the FAA by the Secretary of Education, validly registered in Illinois with the use tax paid and the sticker issued for less than $20. May was an even better month. I was allowed to present my design for November 5887 Quebec to Dr. Bemmet, director of the National Science Foundation. This paid immediate dividends, although MIT was very helpful before this, once word got out that our craft registration status was valid and that the NSF was interested, 
MIT opened their hearts and minds to me. In June, a cadre of MIT professors and alumni took it upon themselves to teach me the CAD program CATIA. In July, I was fortunate to be able to meet with the NASA Administrator, Michael Griffin, who was pleased to see the Boo Origin hat on my head. I am sure the smile he had was the associations with former Associate Administrator, Dr. Stern. Mr. Griffin went so far as stating that he would love to do Blue Sky Stuff too. In August, Blue's very own Dr. Hofer was kind enough to fly to Chicago, debrief me on 87 Quebec's payload, and then fly to SciFood 2008 and nominate me for SciFood 2009. In September, I was sent a follow-up letter from the NASA Administrator. In October, I received advice from an MIT alum and former Saturn V engineer regarding our spacecraft. In November, the first prototype part for our spacecraft's cockpit was completed. My mentors at MIT call me the Tom Sawyer of spacecraft design, since they paint my fence, design the craft, for me. Soon enough, I will be ready to help all of us go further. This December, the second and final cockpit shell prototype part was completed. It will be composed of 60 P parts and 120 Q parts. I am well within the FAA's progress requirements as an aircraft manufacturer and have moved production from Chicago to the IMSA campus in Aurora. New Year's resolution for 2009. The change in administration provides a great opportunity for us to potentially work with the man who wrote the book on how to help us go further, NASA's Dr. Griffin. I would not be where I am without you. What is mine is yours. Thank you.